Put all your energy, put all your eggs, put all your money, put all your attention into the options that yield the greatest results and let the ones that are weak die. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm a 21 year old guy who's interested in many different fields and topics like a challenge. I moved from Lithuania to the UK to study just to experience something new. I was good in school and I love learning. I love knowledge. For example, when I was finishing school and was choosing a degree, I was picking between astrophysics com and computer science. I'm also interested in psychology, physiology, philosophy, sorry. Going to the army. We have nine months of service that everyone has to do. Meditation, psychedelics. Recently been drawn to the idea of piloting planes and doing foreign exchange trades and markets. My question would be, how would you decide which path to follow and dedicate myself to and my life to where there are so many options that I'm interested in all of them? Good. So as I was reading this, I was thinking of uh, one of my favorite lines from, uh, from Dan Kennedy. He said, it go, he says, feed the stallion, starve the ponies. You want to feed the stallion to starve the ponies. And so just to kind of like draw that picture for you, the stallion is like the big, strong, powerful horse that can do a lot of work for you. It gets a lot of stuff done for you, right? He's a stallion. It's a great animal, a great horse, a real asset to your life, you know, if you're into horses. And you want to feed them. You want to give, give that stallion as much as you can. But he says starve the ponies. Well, what are the ponies? A pony is weaker, smaller, not as powerful, uh, can't do as much work, is of a lesser value animal. And so his point is put all your energy, put all your eggs, put all your money, put all your attention into the options that yield the greatest results and let the ones that are weak die. Right? Where in our quote unquote plate spinning world where everybody wants to be everything to everyone and do everything, we end up doing a lot of shit that's just profitless. It's not profitable at all. And so you gotta you have to you have to vet things in your life. And you have to ask yourself this question as it relates to all these different options, which is the most profitable? Right? And I when I say profitable, look, the bottom line is you do have to eat. I know it's not a sexy idea. I know that millennials don't like talking about it, but you must work. You must make money. Don't be against making money because at some point, money's going to buy you food. It's going to buy you shelter. It's going to buy you clothes. It's going to buy you adventures. It's going to buy you women. Everything that you want is going to be predicated on your ability to have profits, right? So profits must be high on your list when you're thinking in terms of stallions and ponies. It's not the only thing, but it's got to be on that list, right? Because a pony ain't going to bring you profits. A stallion will because he could drag that, that uh, till, right? He can do all kinds of stuff as a stallion. Very fast. He could race them, right? He can, he can do all kinds of work. So when you, you take a look at, you know, astrophysics, right, and philosophy, let me put it this way, with philosophy and psychology in particular, they're not very profitable. <laughs> they're awesome. I love them. I've got tons of books on philosophy and psychology, but you know when I started reading philosophy and psychology? When I had money. Because when I had money, I had time. And when I have time, I could do all kinds of shit that's fun and unprofitable. I can do that. I once heard, I think Osho said it, right? So I'm quoting Osho now. But essentially he said that uh, only in wealthy families, wealthy countries and wealthy places do people actually become spiritual. He says it's very hard for people who are poor to become spiritual. Because when you're poor, you're thinking about survival. And when you're thinking about survival, you can't raise up to higher things. And so things like psychology and philosophy, they're higher things. And you have the luxury of indulging in those higher things when you're profitable, right? And it's not always the case, but it's something to consider. <clears throat> and so 
my opinion is love all those things. Love them all. Love knowledge. Buy books. Take courses. But set yourself up so that you can indulge in those things without safety and security ever really being an issue. And the way you do that is by choosing the one that here, I talk to, I talk to the guys all the time about this. In terms of what's going to help you earn a living, you don't have to love it. You don't have to be passionate about it. It doesn't have to be something that you want to think about and do every day, right? Even me, there are times I don't want to do this work, right? <laughs> right? There are times when I'd rather be doing something else. You know what I was doing today? Today I was doing a whole lot of research on semen retention and I have a whole bunch of books that I'm ready to get and I'm, videos I'm watching shit, but I had to stop. Why? Because I got to work. I'm working. Even though this looks cool, like Elliot, oh man, you got it. You got it great. I'm working. I, there, I would, there's things I'd rather go do sometimes, right? But it's tolerable. I don't mind doing it. I don't always want to do it, but I can tolerate it. So you got to ask yourself as well in terms of like, you know, putting yourself in a place where you, you of course, need to sacrifice your time, your energy, your effort into something that's profitable, right? Like you might think the pony is cute and you might think stallions are snotty, but the stallion is profitable. And so you got to tolerate the, 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 the stallion. Maybe you keep the pony, but he can't get all your food. It's got to go to the pony because the pony I mean, it has to go to the stallion because the stallion is the one that's doing the work, is, getting, is making a profit, right? The work that you do has to be tolerable. You got to be able to tolerate it. And, and you got to ask yourself this too. Can you tolerate it for the long haul, right? It's got to be something that you can tolerate for an extended period of time. Otherwise, you're gonna be ADD. And there are a few things that we can't be ADD about in our life. This is just my opinion. And I've made some mistakes in regard to uh, to one of them, which is career. Like I've done what you guys do because I'm a passionate guy. I want shit that feels good, but I grew up. I grew out of that shit. Um, you can't have ADD with women. You cannot have attention deficit disorder when it comes to women. You gotta, in my opinion, it's, it's better to find one great woman that you can tolerate, right? Remember, notice the word, tolerate is still, you gotta be able to tolerate her. You don't always have to be excited about her. That whole excitement trip is a, is a lie. You don't need to be excited about stuff. You don't always be, need to be in love or passionate. In fact, a lot of times that's illusional, delusional, and it's based on illusion and memory and imagination. It's all bullshit. But you gotta be able to tolerate. And with your work, you don't want to have ADD with your work. You want to grow roots with your work. So it's got to be something that you can tolerate over the course of time. Now, and I get it because I'm an old millennial. I know the way you guys think because I think like you too. I'm just a little bit older. But I'm there with you. I understand. Life is so full. There's so much. There are some times that I'm like, I'm in a playground. I, and I want to, or like a kid in a candy shop. I've taken my kids to candy shops, and you know what happens? Oh, ooh, ah, ooh, I want that, I want this, oh, mm, mm, and they can't make up their mind. They're like, oh, man, well, which one, which one? And I'm over there, you know, because I'm dad. I'm like, no, you can only have one. You got to choose one. Sorry. There's only one. Put that one back. And, of course, they're upset, <laughs> right? So when life is like a kid in a candy shop, that's exciting. That's cool. And you can do that. Like, so, for example, uh, if my kids were in a candy shop, but they were a kid with like their own money. They could be in a kid in a candy shop and there's no parent there. They could just buy it. They could take whatever they want. There's no boundaries. There's no, there's, there's no restriction. They could buy whatever they want. They could buy it all and they go eat it all. But they can only do that if they got the money and they got the time and they got the authority. And so you want to create a life where you have that kind of authority. You want to create a kind of life where you have that authority to be able to now, I'm going to spend the next three weeks diving into the philosophy of Descartes, whatever, right? I'm going to spend the next three weeks studying St. Thomas Aquinas, right? Whatever it is, you can then, you can then just throw yourself into it because you got the safety and security, the stability of a, of a tolerable, profitable line of work.
And so think about that. Think about the work. I hope that helps, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.